Welcome back. As you can see, we are really enjoying this conversation with market veterans Madhu Kela as well as Sunil Singhania. We've discussed the retail revolution. We've discussed the immediate uh, sort of areas of concern and triggers for the market. Now let's look at some of the biggest wealth creators of the year and some of the biggest wealth destroyers as well. And then we'll get our guests to comment on whether they still make sense for our portfolios or not. Nimesh? So, you know, I've not looked at this year, but you know, uh -huh. I've just looked from the COVID lows. Okay. And we, yeah. again, you know, Diwali is all about prosperity, mm -hmm. about making big money, creating wealth. We have the mm -hmm. two, you know, biggest voices to, talk, to tell us and guide mm -hmm. us how to create wealth because they've done this all these years. Yeah. So, I just looked at uh, uh, Nifty, uh, the, the indices and some individual names as well. If you look at Nifty Sensex, they've given 200% return since the COVID lows. The mid and small cap have actually doubled, like double the what uh, they've done. So 400% return in the mid cap and the small cap indices. So that's been the massive outperformance we've seen in the equity markets. Now, in terms of individual stock, we normally don't talk about some of those names which have been massive wealth creators in the last four years, right? Autumn Investment, Lloyd Metal, CG Power, Anand Raj, which, uh, you know, Madhubai knows the company very well, Jai Balaji Industries, Elcon Engineering, Jupiter Wagons, uh, Titagar and HBL Power. These are the few names, the, the percentage returns will, will be seen on the screen. So massive, massive money, uh, wealth has been created in these kind of stocks. I've just identified 10, 12 top gainers, so to speak. In terms of big losers, 4,940 percent. Absolutely, that, right? that's the kind of return. 49 times. Yes, uh, yes, yes. That's in, the kind of that is the tenth number. That's the tenth number. So imagine <laughs> the kind of wealth that's been created in so many stocks. But on the other side, some of the big losers since the COVID uh, lows, right? Paytm has been a bit of a wealth destroyer, so to speak. Rajesh Exports, Yes Bank has been a big uh, disappointment. Z Entertainment, which a lot of people used to track a lot, has been a big, uh, big under underperformer, and so is Delivery as well. So. These are the few names which have not done well. But then I was just, while I was preparing this list of the biggest wealth creators, Madhu, a couple of names really stand out which you've been part of and you've seen the journey like, say, Titagar, you know, or maybe Sunil would have been part of so many of these uh, multi-bagger ideas. How do you first identify I'm and how do you ride? I'm part of the Sunil is part of the rest. Part of the rest. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Madhu, you know, again, from a viewer perspective, uh, while we all look at short-term, near-term trends or whatever, but from a real wealth creation point of view, how to identify these names? And then how do you sit on to it for, for a longer period of time to make real money? What is the inflection point for such companies? So I want to remember my friend Rakesh Jujunwala, mm. you know, for two reasons. One, I, I think he was the only person who predicted this boom yeah, in absolutely. the retail uh, money, right? Yeah. He was talking way, 10 years back, ten years. Ki itna paisa aega, itna paisa aega, yeah. ki lag yeah. So we must pay the tribute to him. Absolutely. Right? Second thing, you know, he taught me one thing that if you want real multi-baggers, then you can't have time constraints. Yeah. You can't think that you want to have, you want to make 10 times return in three years. Yeah. Yeah, you have to allow time to build up over a period of time. It may happen in three years, it may happen in five years, it may happen in seven years. Mm -hmm. But if you still, you are making 10 times return, it's still a large money, Absolutely. right? So I would say my first criteria. But it's criteria, a journey, right? Mother? Yeah, it's, my first criteria, so, so my first criteria. Yeah is that whenever I am making an investment, hmm. I am no, normally not restricting hmm. in terms of the time. Sure. You know? Second, these companies which really become multi baggers you have to really buy them really, really cheap. Right? Hmm. And when you buy them, at that time, 100 out of 101 people will tell you, sure. don't do this. Yeah. Because that is another characteristic of investing, right? Hmm. The investing is never a consensus game. Yeah. Right? Third, you know, wherever you have seen really big money being made, mm. it has to be a part of a larger theme. Mm. Very yeah. rarely individual stocks on their own steam do well. Mm. Like, you know, because railways did very well yeah. and that was our call. Yeah. Titagar wagon, Jupiter sure. wagon, so many of these companies did well. well. Because mm. defense did well, so many of defense companies did well. So it has to be part of a... And then, you know, if you get them at a right valuation and you get a right entrepreneur, mm. right, either lethal combination Combined. and then you have time by your side yeah, yeah. that is when you really make return so i would say mm -hmm. uh, on animesh i'm being honest diwali day you know i also did not understand for many years mm. for me market was a means of making income yeah. you know yeah. ek rupaye dia, apne paisa bahut ban gaya. maybe this is the first time we are also holding on to stocks even after they have gone up 10 times 20 times right because now that experience is there. Now only time will tell <laughs> whether it was right or wrong. But at least till now it has worked out well. Sunil, if you want to... Stay the course as long as the story is intact. Exactly. And play big. Stay the course. Yeah. And just because P multiple has become hmm. from 
20 to 25 yeah. or 25 to 30 hmm. if if then uh, it's not a reason to sell. always to sell you have, you have to see real euphoria hmm. or some really bad thing bad thing happening to a company or a sector hmm. for you to be able to sell to this sell company so uh, when you've been part of so, so many stocks where they've become you know multi baggers if you can just explain with one example and how you identify and how you sit on to it and what are the things that you'll watch out for from a pure uh, you know viewer point of view so you know one thing which was Ryan mutual fund yeah uh, sunil's name was sunil multi bagger singhania <laughs> oh, nice <laughs> <laughs> madhu is being modest madhu hamara guru hai he is just today decided that he wants to What's take you? me <laughs> But uh, yeah, but, your secret. You know, in, in your list, yeah. one thing which was very interesting, see the world, when we talk about US markets, we talk about seven stocks, which are all technology, technology. stocks. And all your stocks which you mentioned in India were all domestic, domestic Absolutely. economy, economy, economy you Absolutely. know, brick and mortar stocks. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the moral of the story is that mm. it's not only in very high tech or very exotic, uh, you know, sectors or companies you make, uh, you know, make uh, returns. I think if you are base is right mm. if your you know perspective is right and if you identify both time uh, company and valuations right yeah. i think you are home sure. i think how you lose money mm. if your time is wrong your company is wrong and your earning expectation is wrong yes. so i think when you talk about companies i think the best way of identifying them is in the worst scenario for that sector mm. are the companies still generating some returns and some ROEs because the moment the sector changes I think the company which is the strongest in that sector will do very, very well. Okay. And I think it's all about then taking a call whether, you know, like Madhu mentioned about railways. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if the government would not have focused on railway, even if the company would have been good, yeah. you know, neither the opportunity would have been there nor the PE multiples would have been would have there. Expanded. So I think there is no formula as such. Mm -hmm. But for us, the clear formula is that you have to identify a company which in the worst scenario survives and makes some returns. Mm -hmm. And then in the good uh, scenario, you know, it will do very, very well. Okay. And the other thing which I would like to mention here is that, you know, obviously in India there is private equity which have done very, very well. I think one thing which at least pains us is that all the large returns have been made by foreign investors to the PE fund. Yes. So we are very clear. I think we want to give Indians also an opportunity hmm. of investing on the PE side because why should Indians not make money? The way we have made money in the secondary market, like Indians only make money even in the unlisted space. Sure. So I think that space, hmm. Indian investors have not been able to make, you know, and that doesn't get captured in your returns. Exactly, true, true. But that is also a space where <clears throat> you, you're working and it's, it's done well. I think well, many more will come, but, yeah. you know, I think there again there's an opportunity because the technology side, it's not listed. So this, this uh, when you give the returns of 30 times, 40 times, the unlisted companies don't get captured here. No. I think those returns have just been captured by the firm. Uh, we'll take and a I would like and to mention one change. more thing. See, this process, you know, after 20 years, it looks very easy when you put all these data. Na, but to be able to buy a stock and, and be able to see the volatility. Exactly. And to be able to face markets where yeah. your markets are down 2,000 points, your stock is down 30%. Yeah. You know, where does that come from? Correct. That only comes from in the market. Always, you know, your patience will be tested, but your conviction will be rewarded. Yeah. Yeah. And when you are convinced, you are, you are suddenly convinced in consensus. Sure. It's a rare, a rare conviction, it's your own individual conviction. True. So the quality of work which you do yeah. into these ideas and the kind of thematic understanding which you have yeah. about this company, that is what allows yeah. you. Because if you look at last 20 years, yeah. Best of the companies would have fallen 30-40%, maybe 5-10 times, including companies like Titan, DV, Infosys, right? But who has the guts to really see that kind of fall and still be convinced that I want to hold it for a very long period? That is what truly determines whether you are in in, in do that multi multi bagger return. So conviction is what matters when you're talking about creating conviction real and world. preparation. Yeah. Pre conviction and preparation. Conviction for the right kind of themes and the right kind of companies, promoters and stocks. Right. In fact, after the break, we talk about exactly that. What are these two gentlemen currently bullish about in terms of the next big themes for the next decade or so? We we'll discuss that in just a moment. <laughs>